First, we're going to agree on a prime number p and an integer g. For this example, let's just say g is 5 and p will be 23. Now we agreed on these beforehand, which means that you, your friend, and the eavesdropper all know what these are. Then what we're going to do is pick a random integer that's less than 23, but this one we keep to ourselves. We don't say it or send it or anything like that. Like my value, which I'll call a, will be 6. Then what I'm going to do is our g value raised to my secret number 6, and I do this mod 23. And doing the calculation, I see this is congruent to 8. Then I send this value to my friend. Then my friend does the same thing. They think of a secret number, let's say 4, and they do g raised to the 4th power mod 23. And they find this is congruent to 4. And they send that value to me. So now I have my friend's number, which I will raise to the secret number I thought of, of 6, and do that mod 23. And I see this is congruent to 2. Then my friend does the same thing. They take my value and raise it to their secret number of 4. Doing this mod 23 will get them 2. Which is the exact same thing that I got. And this wasn't an accident. I took our g value, raised it to the a power, and then sent that to my friend, which he then raised to the b power. At the same time, he took g and raised it to the b power, sent it to me, which I then raised to the a power. And yes, even with modular arithmetic, these are going to get you the same answer. And this number we agree will be our secret key. Now what does the eavesdropper know? Well, they know the value of g, they know the value of p, and they know what number I sent my friend and what number he sent me. And he knows these are both the value of g raised to something mod 23. So the only thing we really kept secret were our values of a and b. Everything else the eavesdropper knows. Now since the eavesdropper knows how the algorithm works, they know they need the value of g raised to the a, b, since this was in fact our secret key. And this means that they either need the value of a or b. Either one works because once they have it, they can then figure out what this entire value is. And it turns out this is a hard problem to solve algorithmically. It's hard to efficiently find 5 to what power is congruent to 8 mod 23. Well, especially if we had used bigger numbers. So again, if you know g, a, and p, it is easy to find g to the a mod p. But if you know g to the a mod p, it is very hard to go back and find a, or find g to the a b for that matter, unless you have that value of b, but of course your friend kept that a secret. That's the thing with cryptography. People are aware of how these algorithms work, whether it be Bitcoin, email encryption, and so on. There are papers written about these things, so it's not like these are secret. But the point is that even if someone knows exactly how these work, they should have a really difficult time trying to go backwards without some extra information like a secret number or a secret key. For what I showed, yes, this is very easy to crack. But if instead of 23 we used a prime number hundreds of digits long, it would not be easy at all. And thus we have securely created a secret key that we can then use for further communication. And when communicating with someone halfway across the world, secure key exchange is crucial. But now let's look at one last encryption method that uses number theory. So here's the algorithm. First we're going to pick two random primes p and q, which let's just say are 5 and 11. Then we're going to multiply them to get a value of n, which in our case would be of course 55. Next we compute 5n, which is 40. Now, I won't show why, but when a number can be written as the product of two primes, you just subtract one from each of those prime factors and multiply the results to get phi of n. So here we can see 40 integers are relatively prime to 55. Like I showed you earlier, phi of 10 was 4. Well, 10 is 5 times 2, subtract 1 from each of those, and we get 4. Now notice something, it's really easy to find this when we know both the factors. But if we don't and just know n, it'd be very difficult to find phi of n. Next, we're going to pick two integers e and d, such that e times d is congruent to 1 mod phi of n. So for our example, let's say e is 7 
and D is 23. And yes, if you do seven times 23, then subtract one, the result will be divisible by 40, our phi of n. One of those integers, let's say E, and the value of n I got are public information, otherwise known as a public key. The other value D, I keep to myself. And remember, this value of D is hard to calculate even when someone knows the values of E and N. Then when someone wants to send me some message M, they convert that to some number, which they're always to do, so let's use two in this case, and they raise that to the E power mod N, or in our case, 55. Because remember, both these are public information. They calculate this and get 18, and that's the value they send me. Then all I do is take their encrypted message and raise it to my secret key, 23, and also do that mod n. If I calculate this, it gets me a value of two, which is the exact same as the original message unencrypted, and now I can see what they said. This is the RSA trapdoor permutation. I'll show you guys real quick why it works using just variables. So some random person who wanted to send me a message took their message M and raised it to the power of E mod N. And again, both of these public information. Then they sent that off to me. I took that number and raised it to the D power, which gets me M to the E D. Now remember, E D is congruent to one mod phi of N, which means that E D minus one is a constant times phi of n. It's divisible by phi of n. Then I can rearrange this and get E D equals K phi of n plus one. If I plug this into the exponent, I'll write it over here, I get e M to the K phi of n plus one. And using rules of exponents, I can write this as M to the phi of n to the K times M. And remember, before we saw an integer raised to phi of n mod n is congruent to 1. And then 1 to the k is just, well, 1. So this is all equal to m, the original message the person sent me. And now I can, of course, figure out what they said. Given a message, it's easy to raise it to that public number e and calculate what it's congruent to mod n. But if someone intercepted that, it's very hard to go from that to the original message m, unless of course you have the secret key d, but that itself is very hard to calculate since the adversary wouldn't know the primes that made up n. And if we had used much larger values for p and q, this would have been much more difficult to break. But what you just saw actually isn't the full story since there are ways to crack this and there is more that we need to do, but that might be for another time. Now, the Visionaire Cipher, the overview of number theory, the Diffie-Hellman protocol, and everything else you saw here was all taken from Coursera's course on cryptography, which is what this video was based on. I've been wanting to take a cryptography course for a while, and this was honestly the perfect one to start with. It's a class put on by Stanford that's meant for beginners, so no real prior knowledge is needed, but the class moves quickly. It comes with six weeks of lectures, built-in quizzes to test your knowledge, and as with all of their courses, a discussion forum so you can get personalized help from others who have completed the course. On top of what I covered, you'll learn block ciphers, various types of attacks on these systems, hash functions, and much more. Now, of course, I'm gonna say good things on these sponsored portions, but I do only promote courses that not only I personally find valuable, but also ones that are very well received by everyone else. And at almost five stars for any of you who want to sign up with the links below, you are definitely in good hands. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the Made for Facebook group for updates on everything. Hit that bell if you're not being notified, and I'll see you all in the next video.